data engineering has so many tools that it is overwhelming some of them are too complex to bother with well at least as a beginner and some others you have to learn them today so how do you tell the difference as to which tools are easy and which tools are hard which tools are used industry wide and which tools are almost dead well let's break it down in this video hey there i'm sanjana i make videos on data engineering and ai and in this video i'll be ranking the top data engineering tech stack across five levels based on the amount of effort needed to learn the tools and based on their industry-wide usage. I'll be covering basic tools, prerequisites, big data tools, orchestration tools, data warehousing tools, data lineage tools, DevOps, and so much more. All of these tools I'll be putting in five buckets, low effort, high effort, low usage, high usage, and dead tools. The green zone tools are must learn tools and the blue zone tools are trending across job titles. I'm rating these tools based on my personal experience of applying to jobs, interviewing and working in data engineering for almost three years now. So make sure to watch until the end if you're interested in learning more. First up is the prerequisites aka the OGs. But before that, let's talk a little bit about data engineering. Data engineering is all about creating pipelines that move raw data to where it's actually useful. Think dashboards, machine learning models, and your favorite apps. So for this, the most basic tools needed are a way to interact with the database, transform data, and you know, understand how it looks. And for this, the OG tools that are needed are Python, SQL, and Excel. Python is used industry-wide for almost all of data science and data engineering tasks as of now. So I would rate Python as low effort and high usage. Similarly, SQL is used to interact with the database. So rating SQL as low effort, high usage. And Excel is used to simply see how the data look, you know, when you want to conduct some sort of simple analysis on the data. So Excel is also low effort and high usage. Now there is Pandas, NumPy and Matplotlib. These are some libraries that you use along with Python in order to, you know, like create data frames, understand the data, create simple visualizations and stuff like that. So I would rate Pandas and NumPy as low effort and high usage because they're also mostly asked in interviews. And as for Matplotlib, as a data engineer, you may not be using it on a daily basis. So for this reason, I'm going to rate it as low effort and low usage. Now, there are other tools that existed before Python rose to prominence and that is R and SAS. R I would say is almost as good as dead right now because whatever applications were previously running with R there is mostly migration there's almost a set of migration that's happening in the industry to move those applications to Python. So I would say learning R in 2025 is not the most efficient use of time. Similarly, SAS is another statistical analysis tool which was used before by data scientists in order to conduct their analysis. So right now, I wouldn't say SAS is, although it is still widely used, I would say that Python is a much better option to start with as of 2025. So putting SAS in high effort and low usage. Now, those were the prerequisites. And if you want to move on to the next level, and if you're new to this entire data world and you have no experience in software engineering, learning Python will also help you, you know, like break into software engineering principles using object-oriented programming. And this is very, very important in data interviews. So putting Python with object-oriented programming in the blue zone, which is high effort and high usage. Those were the prerequisites. Let's move on to the next one, which is big data. Data engineers work with terabytes of data every day. Now, imagine trying to query this database on your local machine. It would take hours and it is not efficient. This is where distributed processing comes in. Spark breaks down data into several RDDs, which can be used to process this large amount of data in smaller chunks. Now, there are some open source tools and also cloud platforms like Azure, AWS, and GCP that offer Spark clusters on their you know, environment. 
but on any system the easiest way to use spark is by learning PySpark. So PySpark is the easiest way as of now to learn Spark. But before PySpark came into the picture, you know, there were other tools like Hadoop and Hive, which sort of were the founding fathers of this entire big data processing thing going on. So sad news is Hadoop and Hive are no longer used right now. And uh, I would say it's not really important to learn these technologies in 2025. So coming to the rating, I would put Spark in a little high effort but very high usage and PySpark as the easier way of learning Spark. Hadoop and Hive are almost dead. And uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is Scala, which is nothing but the programming language used to code Spark. So I would, Scala is seen across job roles. I would still stand by my rating of PySpark being easier than Scala. So I would put Scala in high effort and low usage zone. And that was about big data. Moving on to processing. So in data engineering, there are two kinds of processing, batch processing and streaming processing. Batch processing meaning the data is processed in batches and this is a little more time consuming than real time processing because in batch processing, your the data is stored in chunks and it's waiting for a particular amount of time before a particular chunk can be processed. But real time processing is not like that and it is much faster. The open source tools used for real-time processing are Kafka and Flink. Within the cloud ecosystem, each of them have their own version of these real-time processing tools, but they are super niche and I would say steer clear of them at least initially. I would put Kafka and Flink in the high effort and high usage zone because I think it's really important to learn these tools and if you learn them then you'll also get a hang of how to use similar tools on cloud service providers. You know what I mean? Okay, so moving on to ETL and ELT. So let's say you have a batch pipeline which is pulling data from an API and storing it in a database. You have another script which conducts analysis on the data stored in the database. And you want to run these sequentially. You first want to pull the data, store it, and then you want the second script to run on the data that is stored. This is where you need orchestration tools. Orchestration allows you to run these multiple scripts one after another or in any order you desire. The most popular open source orchestration tools that is sort of nailing the industry right now is Airflow. And of course, cloud platforms have their own version of these orchestration tools. For example, AWS has EC2, Lambda, AWS Glue. Azure has Azure Data Factory and uh, GCP has GCS and Dataflow. So as for the rating, I would say Airflow is high effort, but so worth the hype. Instead of rating individual orchestration tools, I'm going to put them in the order. So Azure is the easiest to learn. AWS is a little harder. Google Cloud is not as hard, but I would say that in terms of in recent times, we've seen that, you know, Azure has overtaken AWS in terms of market share. I've worked on projects on all, all three tools and I personally think that Azure is the easiest to learn if you're trying to get an understanding of how the entire EDL process works. There's a video coming on this pretty soon, so make sure you're subscribing if you want to be notified. Now we spoke of cloud platforms, but I want to talk a little bit about data warehouses, data lake houses, and all that good stuff. Data can come in a variety of formats. It can be structured, unstructured, semi-structured, or you know, anything. And a data warehouse only accepts structured or relational data. Some tools here are BigQuery, Redshift, Azure, Synapse Analytics, and Snowflake. Data Lakehouse solves this caveat of data warehouses and allows storage of all kinds of data. It combines the best of data lakes, which is for big data storage, and data warehouses, which is for structured data query. But the catch here is that if a company adopts AWS, 
for example it would be very difficult for the company to move out of the aws ecosystem and move on to let's say azure this is where a lake house intelligence platform comes in you might have heard of frameworks like delta lake which is built on top of apache spark and data lakes and also apache iceberg which is another open source stable format for large scale data storage now these data intelligence layers sit on top of the data lake house and allow easy migration of data from one cloud service provider to another now comes the start of the show databricks which is an entire range of tools that fully integrates with the delta lake framework so learning how to build workflows on databricks learning how to work with tables on databricks learning to build all those visualizations and interact with data on databricks would allow you to understand how the delta lake framework works now this is not the only way to work with delta lakes it can also be used independently of databricks but the catch here is that you need to figure out how to manually configure apache spark to learn it is by learning how to work with databricks there is also apache iceberg which is highly optimized for large scale querying and it is used by big tech companies like netflix alibaba apple for their big data processing so it is quite beneficial to learn that as well easiest of all but still a little high effort and goes into the blue zone along with snowflake for data modeling and then there is delta lake and apache iceberg which you should have a base understanding of so our blue zone is kind of getting full at this point but i want to touch up on a couple of tools that are not frequently mentioned but are really important in the data engineering world these are nothing but devops tools now you might be thinking i'm a data engineer what do i have to do with devops in a lot of small companies data engineers these days are expected to maintain the entire data engineering life cycle so a cloud engineer and data engineer the role is sort of merging at this point you might have to work with model deployment automation ci cd pipelines and all that good stuff if you are working with smaller company and if your role demands of it so it is always beneficial to learn the most commonly used tools and for this reason i've put five tools over here it's terraform docker kubernetes azure devops and git and if i had to rate them for a beginner at least i would say uh, initially you might not need to learn terraform but it is always good to learn however since this is a beginner friendly video i am putting it in the high effort and low usage zone then there is docker and kubernetes which are important so putting that in the blue zone ci cd is sort of easy to learn so i would put this in the low effort high usage zone and then there is also git for version control so i am putting that also in the low effort and high usage zone now the golden words what is the strategy that i have to adopt you initially said that there are so many tools you don't have to learn everything you only need a couple of tools and you end up putting everything in the blue zone what is this i know it's overwhelming but i would say it's not important to learn all of these tools it's just important to learn the basics of how to operate on one of these tools. tools and then you get a hang of how to use it on other tools for example if you learn uh, azure you know how to work with aws and gcp not to the point but at least a fair understanding of what you're doing similarly if you work with databricks you kind of get an understanding of how to model your data you might already know how snowflake delta lake iceberg all of this works so it's mostly about learning one thing perfectly understanding the concepts understanding the basics practicing every day so start with the green zone focus on the blue zone and you're good to go i hope you enjoyed this video if you want to build some projects using these tools make sure you check out my other videos i'm making a bunch of tutorials on working with different cloud service providers and open source tools as well make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next one bye